Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make fermented pesto. But before I get into that, today's video is a collab video with Fermented Homestead and a few other similar channels. And we do stuff like homemaking and homesteading and cooking from scratch and ferments. So if you like today's video, when you're done, check out the description box and subscribe to some of the other channels down there. Check out their videos. And there's going to be some giveaways going on. So check out Fermented Homestead's channel. She's the one that's hosting this. <laughs> so check out her channel and see if you can get it on some of those giveaways. But today I'm going to be showing you how to make fermented pesto. And to start out, you're just going to need some garlic, some basil, and water and salt for the first part of this recipe. Then you let that ferment for a week. And then next week, I'm going to be adding in like Parmesan cheese and olive oil. I don't like to ferment those because they're higher in fat. They don't ferment as well. So I just do the veggies first. Then I add the other ingredients and blend it all together. So as you can see, it's a pretty simple recipe. And this recipe is similar to some of my other recipes, like my lacto-fermented pickles recipe, in that I'm going to be making a brine for my veggies. And so the brine recipe that I use is one cup of water per one teaspoon of salt. And so right now I have my salt. I'm trying to get it to dissolve in the water, so I'm heating up the water. And you want to make sure that your salt is dissolved in there so that your ferment turns out good. The tools that you're going to need are pretty simple. You just need some kind of jar, and you don't need, I have a uh, like half gallon jar here. I just tend to have a lot of half gallon jars, so that's why I'm using it, but you don't have to use a half gallon jar. You could use a smaller jar if you need to. You're also going to need a fermentation weight, and I might need, um, like I usually use a silicone lid, sometimes with the looser ferments that might float up to the top. I put like a little silicone piece in there, and I'll have things linked down in the description box, including this recipe, so if you're interested in exactly what I'm using, it'll be linked in there. But I want to make sure that my veggies are submerged below the brine. And then on top, I like to use a fermentation lid, but you don't have to. The fermentation lid, I really like it though because it keeps out mold. And when I haven't used a fermentation lid before, I've had a few issues with mold sitting on the top of the ferment. And when I use the fermentation lid, I don't have that. So that's why I like to use the fermentation lid. And once my water cools down here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you how to make fermented pesto. So the first thing that I do is I dissolve some salt in filtered water and I use Himalayan salt for this or sea salt, not table salt. And I bring it to a boil and then I let it simmer to let the salt fully dissolve. Then once the salt is dissolved, I let it sit for maybe about a half an hour to cool down before adding it to my ferment. While that's cooling down, I go ahead and get my basil leaves in the jar, and these are actually some frozen basil that I saved from my garden last summer, and they're so good, so I put them in the jar, and I used about four cups of basil leaves, and then about four cloves of garlic. I think I added a little bit more garlic, and it made it a little too garlicky, so I recommend around four cloves. And then once the brine is ready, I went ahead and added that. And you want to make sure that the leaves are submerged below the brine. So something I do is I add this little silicone lid to it to help push all the leaves down. And then I add my weight on top. And then I add my lid. And you don't have to use the fermentation lid, but I like to use it. And I put my little date on there and then set it on the counter for 7 to 10 days. Then about a week later, I filter out the brine and you can save this for soup or other ferments. And then I take the leaves and put them in the blender with the garlic and I add in some walnuts or pine nuts, about two tablespoons, a third cup of olive oil, a fourth cup of Parmesan cheese, which is optional, you don't have to add the Parmesan cheese. And then I let this blend up into a smooth pesto. If you add the Parmesan cheese, it makes it a little more creamier, as you'll see. So if you don't like it as creamy, I would leave out the Parmesan cheese. So let me know if you make this recipe, and I'll have the full recipe 
written out and it will be linked in the description box as well as the other channels involved in this collab. So make sure you check those other channels out because they have some really good stuff on there. It's fermented February so we're sharing several different fermented recipes throughout the month. And I love fermented pesto. It's a great way to use up extra basil in your garden. And this past summer, my basil just like took off and almost took over one of my whole beds. I just had so much basil. I just kind of dumped a whole bunch of seeds. That's probably why. But the basil grew so well. So I had bags and bags and bags of it in my freezer that I need to use. That's why I'm using frozen basil right now but it's great throughout the summer if you want to preserve your basil. You can just throw it in the salt water brine and let it ferment, and then make pesto, and it will keep for a while, several months at least. And I like to use it on pasta or pizza. I have even used it on grilled cheese, and if I remember, I'll try to link those recipes in the description box as well so you can check them out. So definitely scroll down after this video and check out some of those links, and please be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys again soon. Be well, guys.